Hi there, this is Dean with Festive Photonics, and today we're going to be doing a quick demo of an offset face lock with the D2-135 while using the peak lock feature of the D2-125. As you can see here, my electronics are already set up, and if we take a look down at the table, you can see that we have two D2-100 DBR lasers. The master laser on the right is going through a D2-210 spectroscopy module. We're using rubidium for this setup. And then the beats are combined in a D2-250 heterodyne module and picked up on the D2-260 beat note detector at the far left there. We are currently in peak lock mode and we are not ramping. And the reason we're not ramping is so that we can come over here and take a look at this beat note. Now, if you've ever tried this before, this may look familiar. And what we're seeing is a ton of noise on what should be an ordinarily very thin, well-defined beat note. This noise comes from the four megahertz dither that we write onto the master laser to get the peak lock uh, features to show up on spectroscopy. You cannot get rid of this noise entirely, but you can mitigate it and get the system to a point where you can easily get an offset phase lock with the D2135. And we're gonna be showing you how to do that. So if we come back over here and we switch our system into ramp mode, we can take a look at our peak lock signal. Keep in mind this is rubidium spectroscopy and this just looks really awful. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to optimize this system is turn the phase and dither all the way clockwise on the front panel of the D2125. Once that's the case, we'll have this flat featureless line, which is just a good starting point for optimizing the system. You don't actually have to do this step, but I recommend it if you're new to this. The next thing we're gonna do is turn the phase counterclockwise until we start to see these peaks. And what we want is for them to be as big as possible, but to have not moved down yet. So I'm gonna put it right about here. You can see that they've sort of maximized and they're just starting to move down as I turn it more clockwise. It is not critically important to maximize the phase, but the better you get the phase, the lower you'll be able to turn the dither and the better your beat note will end up looking. So now that we've got the phase in a place where we like it, I'm gonna turn the dither counterclockwise as well until we start to see some of those hyperfine features from our spectroscopy. Now, typically, if I were sending this out uh, just as a normal unit, I would place the dither about here. We consider this to be a good balance of size of feature and number of features, which you can see. But since we are trying to get an offset face lock, what I'm going to do is turn the dither as far down as I can and still see the feature I want to lock to. We can zoom in on our oscilloscope here and see those features a little better. Now to get any lock, you need two things, a slope and a zero crossing. I've lined our error signal up with the zero crossing as best as I can right now. And to find which slope we'll lock to, I'm going to turn the ramp amplitude up and down like this and look for the point on the screen where the green error signal doesn't move around. So right now you can see it's sort of on the peak of this feature right here in the middle of the screen. What we need it to be is on the side, so I'm going to turn the laser current down a little bit to shift the spectroscopy. And now we're right about on the side of this feature. I'm going to line it up a little better with the zero crossing, and we should get a good lock from doing this. You can tell the system is locked because both lines stay in the center of the screen, and this should be a fairly robust lock. If you find that your system comes unlocked often, you might consider doing the temperature servo these systems do rail after a little while, so the temperature servo is the best thing to do for long-term lock. We're just doing a quick demo though, so we're not going to engage that. Coming back down here, I have a lock now, so I can switch my monitors to the D2-135. An important thing to note about this is that the DC error signal on the D2-125 is this middle BNC, but on the D2-135, it's the far left BNC. Great. So now that we have this set up, we can come back to our uh, oscilloscope. We'll need to zoom out a little bit to see anything. And we should be able to switch the D2135 into ramp mode and get a nice looking uh, half of a house signal here. You can tune where you want to get your phase lock by turning the VCO tune knob. The 
location of the zero crossing will determine what frequency the D2135 locks to. Uh, I'm going to place it right here in the middle, and our zero crossing looks really good, so I'm going to start by turning the gain as low as it'll go, and flipping the system into a lock. Perfect. So we now have an offset lock with the D2135, but to get an offset phase lock, we'll need to adjust the gain a little bit. First of all, you can see that our beat note looks a lot better than it did before. And we'll see real quick if we can get the offset lock into an offset phase lock by adjusting the gain. So right now I am centering the beat note on the screen and we are decreasing the span on our spectrum analyzer. And we will be able to tell that we have an offset phase lock if, when we adjust the gain, we see this peak become coherent, which just means that we are able to push the noise from our servo out into some sidebands here. So let's see if I can do that. I think my coarse gain is about right, but let's adjust the fine gain a little bit. It seems I need one higher setting. And here you can see as I turn the fine gain up, that servo noise gets pushed out and our peak becomes more coherent. That is an indication that we have a phase lock. So what I can do now, just to make this look prettier, is switch into manual resolution mode. And we can turn that down and start to see our coherent peak from our offset phase lock. Hopefully this has been an instructive demo. If you have any further questions, feel free to email us at info at or call the number on our website.